Rengar is next up in the list. Okay. Who knows? I mean, sure, it could have been uh, or it's a misban. Solicu scouting, probably not a misban. Uh, you can definitely like remake the pick and man phase. Yeah, and yeah. myself the first one, but uh, yeah, could it literally just been Solicu scouting? Being like, okay, there's a ton of Rengar games. We're expecting you to pull it out now because if you are like J team. If you can like first pick a Rek'Sai or a Lee Sin and ban one of the others, then if you are pushing him again on Ivern, I think that's fine for you because right. it really didn't do anything in the last game. Well, what's also the wrong like composition it was building, like there was no damage on the team. Ivern yeah. couldn't really like protect a big damage dealer. There's no Twitch or Vayne on that exactly. side. Exactly. It actually would have been a good game for Vayne, interestingly enough, on, on blue team, I, I think. I guess now we're banning Ivern too. Okay. Yeah, they're, they're removing the jungle pool. They're setting up for the Rek'Sai first pick, I think. Sure. Because I, I think, here's my thought on the mindset. Then you have to ban Lee Sin. Vega Squadron well. must ban away. Sure, that may be that may be the third ban. Vega Squadron like, must ban Syndra because they don't know Echo. And if that's the world you live in, right. then suddenly you get to set up for this. So. Yeah. No, no, I mean, it, it's very standard to see Rise with Blanc Syndra being banned here on, on red side just yeah. because you don't want to give a, a first pick over that's so powerful to the other team. So that is very likely to happen. And then, yes, you can ban Rek'Sai at least in now and, and take the other jungler. Like, surely that is the goal here with banning Rengar, who no one has played so far in this tournament. And Iron that just did absolutely nothing in the last game. Otherwise, why would you ban them? This is really strange because if you are a normal team in pick and ban phase, yeah. trading Rek'Sai for Lee Sin or Lee Sin for Rek'Sai is not that bad. You can you can definitely survive that trade. Right, right. And then you can just like, you know, ban Syndra now. They can first pick their jungler if that's what they want, and you just take the other one. You're seeing J Team here really focused on trying to mitigate what Vegas Squadron has shown they're able to do. You saw you see Thresh banned here and they had picked it away in the previous game. J Team so now they're trying to Syndra. respect this. Everyone is using Syndra as bait in this game. Well, I'll we'll take her. If they have the answer. Yeah. I'll take it just because I haven't seen if there's an AP Echo on that other side as a counter, and it's a BU3. As and JT, you've got you a game afford, to work with. Exactly. You can afford to gamble in this one and see if the Echo is there. Yeah. If it's not, you just get your Syndra. And you're still going to trade Lee Sin and Rek'Sai then. So unless JT were actually predicting Syndra to be open in this case here. But still, I, I don't think the Rengar really makes any sense. It clearly is something they have like yeah. they have maybe scouted that as potential like Rengar last pick. And they're like, okay, let's just take it away on blue side. Yeah. I also just, even in a very minor point, the, the Rise and LeBlanc being the first ban seems weird. Like, if you're willing to ban Twitch, I feel like you ban that first, and then you... Because the the power picks, like the, the Rise and LeBlanc, are things you're going to bargain with later on. You, just, you right. need more information about the game theory of pick ban before you dedicate those bans, whereas Twitch was always going to be a one-sided ban here. And even if you, like, let them know, hey, you're not gonna let, you're not going to get to play Twitch comp, I think you get more information to get to pivot better with bans by rearranging those and deciding how the mid laner is going to shake out. So we see the Rek'Sai. Uh, not a big surprise, obviously. Sure. Uh, Rek'Sai, Lee Sin being the two big ones. And again, then it's normally the Poppy Maokai coming in. But again, it doesn't really do that much that you take it because you're just going to give the other one to the other team. Like, yeah. You, you get a king, they get a king, you get an ace, they get an ace. Like, you're really not getting that big of an advantage. It, here, Jay can also just pick like a Zyra and he can and he can match the Karma. So yep. there needs to be a specific answer to the Syndra. What we have seen teams do in the past is like things like Vladimir Tom Kench, mm -hmm. which basically means Syndra can't one shot any of Anyone them. Anyone on the target. Yep. But Karma is already locked in now, so there's no Tom Kench coming to stop that one shot. Vladimir right. is still an option, but he's can get pushed in in the lane, or he will get pushed in in laning phase. Lee Sin Syndra is a fantastic combo against something like Vladimir. We'll see if they go for it. The Ash left on the table this time around. The Twitch ban came through, and now BB gets to play this champion once again. Seems plenty of teams happy to grab that champion any time they get the chance to. Yeah, J Team first picked it earlier today. Yeah, so but it wasn't for BB, so it. True. I'm not always going to be able to say, oh, for sure it's what he really wants to go for here. But yeah, Syndra obviously a first pick for the champion. Zyra Ash, a crazy I mean, strong bottom lane. Damn. Yeah. This is, uh, this is a good pick and ban phase so far for J Team. They are getting cream of the crop in every role. So everything far. they wanted. They, this is one of the strongest 2v2 lanes you can ask for. And they for. can still run out with like Lisa and Maokai, and it's like, oh, exactly. you picked a number one or two champion in every single, in every single okay. matchup here. So, so we get the Vlad. Yeah, Wait a minute. Tank? Misfortune 80 carry. Karma support, or Karma top maybe. It's tank, Karma top. That's not a guarantee yet. Okay, okay. It could, it could be it could MF be support, carry. tank karma talk, or, or MF80 carry and, and yeah. karma support. All right, yeah. There, there are some, uh, some some options, as you said. MF80 carry with karma yeah. support. 
combat top lane, something I have seen a bit in solo queue and MF support, then you last week your AD carry, trying to, you know, have all these mind games. We get the Vladimir we talked about against the Syndra as one of their Again, people call it a counter pick, let's call it like a soft counter pick because yeah. Syndra can't really kill you. It Syndra still gets to do mostly Syndra things. She but pushes it, you in. It, it reduces one of her advantages, which is killing her lane opponent. Exactly. Now freak you mentioned the Lee Sin Maokai. Yep. Can be Lee Sin Poppy as well. Like you can't really go too wrong here, but if you, if if there is a chance of Karma top, I think going Maokai and like rushing some MR. Just get a cowl and you're invincible. Basically, yeah, you, you might get pushed in, but you don't really die in that lane and you just yeah. try and get out of laning phase because the Karma top lane and, and potential MF support and so on, like once you get past that mid game, the damage just disappears really from them and, and, and big tank in, in the front like Maokai becomes basically yep. unkillable. Yeah, the nice thing is Vega Squadron definitely have more damage in the lineup now though. They've got Vladimir who's a great repeated damage dealer. Very much unlike the Syndra who tries to one-shot and if it doesn't happen, then out they go. And MF it's still a... Yeah, so it's MF80 carry 100%. Now the question is which way are the Karma and Nautilus going? Because it could have been either way around. Looks like it's going to be Nautilus top, not the Poppy, which... I'm trying to figure out why they're making that trade. This is the first time we've not seen Maokai and Nautilus be the top lane matchup. And I'm trying to think of like what compelling reason why. So there, there is a world where getting to the back line as a puppy can be very hard against like Zyra ulti and against Ash kiting. So getting a point on click long range or guaranteed knockup, not instant, but guaranteed yeah. knockup from Nautilus means that the Vladimir with Ghost will be able to kind of follow that knock up and get to the back line and therefore you can try and like kind of play around the zoning potential from an Ash Syrah. Instead of Poppy who's kind of running at you in that fight, gets knocked up, gets slowed right, and it's right. hard for Poppy to then get to the back line. That seems to be the main reason to go Nautilus in this specific situation over the Poppy. And with attack damage misfortune it could be a whole lot of damage output here. So a team fight comp, Vlad, Nautilus and Misfortune gonna be the trifecta there for Vega Squadron, hoping to bring it back. They've got to win two straight if they want to get themselves back in on this matchup here up against J-Team. Two straight, they've got to make it. J-Team themselves, double match point here for them. If they can win, they move on to their rematch with Immortals for the last semifinal spot. And we'll see which team can do it as we load into the game. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. We are here into game two. On the blue side, J-Team. One game away from knocking Vega Squadron out of IEM Gyeonggi. It would be a 0-3 game score for Vega Squadron. They already lost to Samsung earlier today and now facing a 0-2 to J-Team. Yeah, it's one of their rough things here, rough situations. If you do drop out on the first day, you sadly don't get to play more games at all. You just get to stay around and watch the other games, but trust me, it's it's a lot more fun playing them than just yes. watching the other teams play. Bot lane here, there will be a quick invade. Nun Holy is here with his team. JT, J team, they will put a very good ward level one and actually saw the guys move around the corner. Nautilus, yeah. of course, can catch someone with his massive anchor. This time around, spotted, Maybe nothing will really happen. And that. another, a little bit surprising pick and ban phase where we did see some some interesting things like yeah, MF AD carry is something we almost never see. Really don't. Still very strong laning AD carry. Yes. Especially also with when you pair her with like a range support. But Zyra Ash is one of the strongest two v two lanes as well to deal with. Only annoying thing for the Ash is staying around, uh, staying behind your caster minion suddenly is not a good right. idea. The the big thing about this matchup is you've got to be the team with the push. If you're the team with the push, you can do all the things you want to do. So you can see Lex right away. Cues the minion wave, constantly switches targets to make sure that the uh, I forget what it's called, the the passive damage love stacks tap. up. Love tap, thank you. Yeah, the love tap, love taps. You have to hit a different target for it to continue to do its bonus damage. So constantly trying to shove that in. And whoever shoves first has a lot more pressure in that lane. Yeah, one of the really cool things about Zyra, one of the reasons she's so good 
is early game her Q can cover like the entire caster wave and you can often hit both the caster minions and like one of one of the other guys in the lane and you can both deal damage to them and as you mentioned like push the lane we do often see Cyrus stay like further up in the lane like level one to get these plants spawning around the laning phase very early so you can proc them with your Q but in this case here they already got the push to get early level two and that is looking pretty rough there and early for Lex and Edward down in the bottom lane and they're just gonna take so much extra damage like that's the worst once you lost the race for level two step away yep. just wait for the minion waves to come to you don't take extra damage it can be a potion you have to use now and that's a sustained advantage for the other team yep well a couple of good cues from Lexi managed to get a Killing shot bounce. If you don't know, Misfortune Q does bonus damage if it, the first shot kills the target. So you really want to like warm up these minions, then bounce off the low HP ones. And he managed to knock one straight into Jay's face and get some damage output there. Very classic play though. Once your bot lane has the early push, your jungler kind of skips some of his own camps and just goes straight into enemy jungler because again, most players, especially on Rek'Sai, will start on top side with the yep. red buff. They will then move down towards blue buff much later. And now you can see Archie actually came in there took the blue buff, had back up from Jay, and it's enough to just have your support nearby, so you can either safeguard to her, or you can take a potential skirmish with your support here, because Zyra deals so much damage in the early game, mm -hmm. and that just means you can now, as a team, invade the enemy jungle, deny a camp, Yep. and you're now level above if you look at the Lee Sin versus the Rek'Sai. Absolutely, they even used the Scryer's Bloom and killed one of the Trinket Wards that Sans Road put down in front of the blue buff, so it's even dark for Vega Squadron down there, and Lots of good things that happened right now for JT. We'll see how much more this pans out. Currently, a 200 gold lead for the squad, but I shouldn't say squad because it's literally in Vegas' right. name. But I was thinking for like the blue damn, team. Like, oh, okay. Yeah. All right, there we go. Morning. Actually, I didn't know the interaction there. So if Morning hits the Q fast enough, Nautilus can't get his basic auto attack down in time. Today, I mean, I never played the matchup before, but today I learned. Why don't you play tanks top? Come on, free. Because IQ for bot support and ah. then a Mazira one trick. You play any MFA to carry? Uh, actually, a fair bit, yeah. Always been very fun to play. Uh, always really enjoyed playing MFA to carry, also because, like, especially in solo queue, like you can win so many lanes. But Ash Syrah is one of the lanes that, again, I can definitely see you struggle against. And we saw like like early push went in favor of J Team. They got the invade off. Yeah. But Lex is keeping up in farm, which is really important to know. Yes, they're down potions. You can see that Lex already has lost his, whereas DB still has that one. So. You know, in the long run, you might see this kind of turn around, but the fact that they're kind of trading equally and the HP bars are fine for Vegas Squadron, uh, they can get a, a reasonably good recall and get that BF Sword in, or the, the quadruple long sword, whichever they actually want to do for Lex. Yeah, I definitely like BF Sword first, just for that insane damage it actually does deal for you, and then you want to most likely go for just like... I mean, I've seen both Essence Reaver and Vintage actually as first rushes. I think Essence Reaver is still fine, just with a lot of cooldown reduction, but yeah. Vintage, of course, is like the highest amount of DPS you can get as an AD carry. This is a really weird recall timing for Vega Squadron, actually. They're, they're not recalling in front of a cannon minion wave, so it actually allows Lex the actually push. stopped his recall. Oh, he baited it? Yeah, okay. he baited That's it. He's still sitting there. I actually think they wanted to recall. Or Edward probably called for the recall, and he said, hang on, I still need a bit of extra gold. Yeah, it's interesting. Mid lane, though, once again, Cinder will push in the Vladimir, mm -hmm. allowing Lee Sin to be a bit more active around the map. Nothing's going to have top. Nothing is going to happen top and they're just going to sit and farm. And we're just going to have to see like the Syndra Lee Sin combination push in this um, lane here and then start moving to bottom lane. Like that's basically going to happen or should happen once the bottom lane hits level 6. You just push in mid with your mid laner and your jungler and you walk down to the bottom side and you just ash ulti straight in the face of MF. If she flashes, you wait. Two minutes and do it again. Two minutes and then you do it again and there's nothing she can do against it. And then you dive her and you take that bot lane tower. Like That is one of the reasons this Ash-Zyra combo is so good. And so many teams love to play Ash because she's so good at setting up these early plays. And you don't even need extra damage from your AD carry when you have a mid laner and a jungler coming down. Because that's enough to take down anyone in the bottom lane. Two things here. I think BB sold his health potion to afford the BF sword. Which means actually now he's out of sustain. Yeah, okay, he's got flash and heal. He can probably get away from it all in, but actually can get poked down if Vega Squadron get control back in the bottom lane. See Edward going in, gets the root, gets the front half of the power Q. And there's the bounce, and BB can't really regen that. Deathfire Touch does apply to Misfortune Q, and that's reasonable damage and you've got some bonus AD already. Yeah, so they're basically just pushing in the lane, not able to do much more. We did see Zanzara was down here. 
just took out of ward and, and that's basically it. So for now, just a very slow early game. I actually think it, it's just Ooh, fine. That. And that is beautiful from Lex. Like that's the thing. Once you get a few of these hits, it made it carry just has to pace because if you hit level six and he's low, mm -hmm. you just ult it straight away. Yep. So now BB takes a crap recall. Didn't have any potions. Edward's not gonna find much more to do here, but he saw the pushing power available to Karma MF and yeah, BB's gonna lose pretty much a full cannon wave. And I really want to see what happens late game with all these tanks. With like Vladimir, Nautilus, you know, Rek'Sai. Syndra won't really have an easy target. There's gonna be no one she can really one-shot. BB obviously will try and take down the tanks, but it's gonna take forever as an AD carry, almost no matter which AD carry you play against these massive tanks here. So this late game team fight is gonna be super interesting in this League of Tanks and League of Shielding with Kama. Yeah. There's gonna be Lockets, there's gonna be Redemptions. There's gonna be so many different things to kind of keep these big tanks alive. And they're gonna get like Spirit Visage or Nautilus, which obviously buffs even more what's gonna yeah. happen. And it gets super, super tricky there to actually take down some of these targets. I don't think Visage affects shields, only the healing, but yeah, yeah. still, it's, Not it's the shielding. health and CDR and magic. Yeah. Like, all those things are good tank stats for someone who can shield himself. So, yeah, definitely important. And, yeah, just Foco with a blue buff, able to continue to push in. And, yeah, he is winning lane. He's up 10 CS, you know, able to roam away first, but he's got to find that actual opening. But now we have six on the bottom lane. This play we talk about. One more push in mid, and then move your Cinder from that Ooh. mid lane. That's Running it, what he just walks out. There's even a good control ward being placed near the mid lane by J Team that allows Cinder to walk into that bush, get out of vision instantly, and then you either have to, as a bot lane, just back away. Now we see the roam coming in. They didn't actually clear this ward, but they see it. This is the exact play we mentioned. And this is exactly what you have to do because even if you don't dive, you force the enemy lane to step away from tower and you start hitting the tower as an AD carry with your support and you just slowly chip the tower down. And then you go back again to mid lane, push mid once again, do the exact same play where you walk bot lane, and naturally over time you will take down the tower. And you have to do that as J team to kind of start snowballing so these big tanks don't get tons of time. Because that's the thing about Vladimir, he won't do anything right now, but if you give him another 20 minutes of farming, he will be a late game monster that you can't really take down. So it's important to keep doing this. Look at your minimap guys, Syndra once again is moving from the lane. Whenever this bot lane wave is near the tower, she's moving. And they need to get some hits on tower every time. Down to half HP is his turret right now. The question is, can they get the rest of it before a Nautilus teleport comes through? The important thing is when the Sight Stone comes in, you can start warding those brushes, and suddenly you can no longer be safe against the TP. Yeah, and right now as well, your top lane should never use TP back to his own lane. You should just save it. Morning, it's very important he has it ready in case a big fight happens bot lane, because that stops Obviously, the other team from getting a 5v4, potentially. Mm -hmm. Another warping spot, and the same again. Cinder steps out of vision, wants to move up. She's back in now to push the wave. And sadly, for J team, they're not really able to get more damage on this tower. But we get to see the play over and over, and it's just a matter of time before there's an opening. And they actually get, like, a kill, or straight up the tower. Ooh, look, up on Edward, but a nice... Ooh, wow, all the CC, all the knockups right there. Layered on the Lex, running out of HP, down to 200. Does walk away. Jay has his life and BB now fully healthy. And you can see that no one is now in position to defend this. And that's going to be first turret. Yeah, the roam is coming again. So there's four members on bottom side now and a teleport top lane from morning. It's just really well played by J Team. They might even get a kill mid. Looking into the two. Lots of damage. And that's going to be kicked up as soon as he flashes this. That's a really important flash. And he heals just oh. in time from the ultimate. A big jumble of words from me. But basically, that Sanguine Pool was a quarter second away, under a quarter second away from Lee Sin getting his ulti off, and that would have been a killing blow almost for certain. Very tight timing there. So Vladimir stays alive. They're trying to bait near the bot lane tower and see if J Team was greedy and actually step in to hit it so then Zanzara could gank them. It's still yeah, like one, auto it's one auto from each. But they're just playing it a little bit safe. They know the enemy jungle can't be nearby, and they don't have to back up because Syndra went back to base together with the Lee Sin. BB gets solo gold. I like this uh, play though from J Team. Like it's it's a by the book play, you know. Two winning lanes, push in both of them, roam down, get pressure on tower, take the easy tower first, the bot lane tower, and now you can push out bot lane once again with your Ash and your Zyra, and then you can roam. You can go mid lane with them, and you can force a play on the no wave clear Vladimir, yep. or you can swap all the way to top lane, and you can start pushing in on the top tower. It's obviously lost its its buff now. Very important though to always push your lanes first before you start making these crazy rooms. Then you don't give your team a chance to actually move with you or get damage on your towers. 
All right, so you can get tempted in early Infernal Drake. That but is so risky. Misfortune, single target damage output is real low. Now Zanzra, yep, going to get kicked back into the team. Going to be an easy pickup there for Fofo. When he wants it, lands a stun, but no, doesn't do much more. Now Lux going to be careful. And suddenly Morning now ready for the flank. TP's in, flashing to the back line as Lex tries to get away. And Non-Holy running out of health, just gets ulted, running out, does flash away in time and stays up for this one. And just barely, it's Vega Squadron able to slink away with their health bars. So that should be map control now for J-Team. Yeah, no one died, still fine for J-Team because they stopped the Infernal Drake. Don't even have to start it themselves yet, can just go back and play the more standard laning phase where they're already winning because that's where you have your strongest members and your strongest lanes, mid and, and bot lanes, so play around them again like they just did here. This wave is going to get pushed back by Lex, but then BB just goes down and catches the wave, pushes it out once more. And if you push it all the way to top lane, I should see Edward. A lot of cooldowns use the ulti, and Edward empowered W to heal himself just to make sure it's going to be fine and no one else going to land the damage. So a trade of ultimates, such as it is, Edward's fine. And I should, of course, say if you push all the way to the bot lane tier 2 tower, it would be hard to push to top lane tier 2. Then you can move in and even start the Infernal Drake. And the enemy AD carry has to decide, do I pick up the farm or do I go down to fight? And if he goes down to fight, well, then he's going to lose out on it. They are starting a little bit early. Phoebe is now pushing his way, but it is perfectly fine because they know Edward is back in base. Smart play here from J-Team and, and showing why they were such a strong team in the LMS because they have been playing really well here the first 13 minutes. Totally agree. A 2,000 gold lead earned by just their hard work. The 1,100 gold from the first turret kill and the rest of it in farm because they've been winning by some margin. Almost all their lanes in a way. A lot of it just the fact that Jay is going to earn more by being Zyra than a Karma Will with the same kind of items. But either way, a nice lead all the same. JT with an Infernal Drake going to feel good. Let's see what else they can grab for themselves. Zanzaros stealing away. Raptor sets Ooh, nice. It. And he's going to want the knock out of Fofo. Here comes all the cooldowns being burned. There's the jump into the mix. And one more Q should do it. He's got the power. And not quite going to get the damage, actually, as it is. Fofo able to get away. And Edward going to lose his life. Nice pickup there for BB. Landed the arrow. Landed all the damage they needed. Actually, he's going to hate himself for missing the Q there. Didn't manage to connect it and actually pick up a second kill. But doesn't matter for J Team because they got that first blood. And once again, it's just straight back to that bottom lane to push it all the way out with the Ash and Zyra, and then you can move them around after. Making sure that whenever something is happening on the map, they can leave the lanes. They can collapse, they can join the fights. They're never in a numbers disadvantage. And that again, that's what happens when you have winning lanes. And especially when you play around the winning lanes, because it means you can always move first or react when the enemy is doing something. Mm -hmm. It's always important to be there first because you can do all your damage and kill somebody off before they can do the same to you. A big recall came in for the Vladimir here. Picks up Abyssal Scepter just from the Negatron Cloak and also adds a new Ruby Crystal to the mix. So, pretty big spike now in for the Vlad. And, you know, Vega, unfortunately, still down a fair bit, but not insurmountable at this stage. No, definitely not. I mean, this means the Vlad won't get, you know, one shot by Syndra. He still needs to get his Rhylize. Potentially even a third item before it becomes like a big late game carry. And that's why you're always looking like Void Star for Death Cap coming in. And now we get that roam to the top side. Notice how the bot lane wave has just been pushed to the tower by Lex. And that's because, of course, JT pushed it all the way out. And now non holy taking damage. Looking to take all the damage that he can do. There's the knockup. There's another Q for Lee And that should be the kill. And it's going to go over to BB who shows up in time to make it happen. And now Morning should just step away from the bot lane tower because he knows his jungler just showed top side. That means enemy jungler will most likely show bottom side. Zanzara is here. Morning is playing it risky. Edward has power aggro. There's the knockup. There's plenty of damage output there. And Edward playing it just right. One more shield. And oh, nope. They don't have enough damage anyway. Morning gets away from it. Uses the flash to make it out. And that minion wave is gone, so Morning trades his flash for basically one more wave of time. Make sure his team can take the top lane tower. You can always debate, is it worth it to lose your flash as you can just step away instantly? Seeing as they're also pushing on the top lane tower, but sadly don't have minions. They do have plants, though. Next wave, the turret will go down. I mean, in, the, in a 30-second timing window yeah, for that, no, no, is could definitely have been worth it. that wave. And yeah, I think yeah, Morning no. made the right choice, so well played Every by him just to buy time. And Maybe the dive could have been played better, but either way, that's two turrets for one on the trade. Yeah, definitely ended up being worth it here. Another smart play by J-Team, following the game plan of pushing out lanes and then rotating to other lanes and just making sure you always reach towers first, you always reach the lane first. 
And whenever the other team is pushing out their lane, you're there to pick it up. And you just constantly maximize farm across three lanes. It's beautiful to watch when yep. it's executed correctly. And, and that's where suddenly you see a top laner, a mid laner, AD carry, all picking up a ton of farm. And none of them are falling behind because they're just making sure they always catch waves at the same time. And they never seem to lose out on anything. And it gives you a big gold advantage because you have the CS advantage and you have the tower advantage. It's 4,000 up right now. Interesting that BB made a quick stop over for the Hex Drinker, and I feel like he's not under that much magic damage threat, so I'm a little surprised that he delayed his Infinity Edge to do so, but he thought it was the right choice just to make sure nothing went wrong. And with how much A-Team are ahead, I mean, I can understand a more risk of his choice. Edward gonna get stunned. Abby's gonna take a million damage. That's gonna be the kill picked up, and bullet time, and not gonna be enough to take down Achi. Three to zero in kills, mid lane under fire. And then we go bot lane and we see two tanks, but nothing happens. Let's Not go back to mid lane. But also be like, I definitely agree with your point there. Like you don't really need the Hexstringer right now. Could be that he's he was just sitting on enough gold for it and just getting a pickaxe and nothing else is kind of like a meh buy because obviously he can't get his full infinity edge. But he might just say, you know what, I want instant power. I know I'm gonna need the Hexstringer maybe at some point in the game. Actually, I actually don't even think you need it against Vladimir. Hard to kind of say why exactly they wanted it. But he's getting instant power, instant value. Sure. That Prey Seeker did like five less damage because of the Hex Drinker. Insane. Worth it. Zanzara kicked in. There's the knockup. He's going to flash away, but still going to get tackled. The Strangle Thorns, no cooldowns available. Morning trying to reach in, but a Satchel Charge says no. And then it's going to be on to Lex Misfortune. Running away slowly as it is. That Q could have been a death, but Ashi didn't land it. And now we have. A misfortune that didn't do well in the early game. Trying to step into the mid game where a Maokai and a Lee Sin will jump you every single time. Yeah. It is so difficult for Lex to deal enough damage. He needs to just get level 11, get ranked to ulti, and we have to just see like a team fight where these AoEs are just lined up perfectly. Otherwise, you're just gonna keep losing this game. And I don't think you're gonna see those sort of perfect lineup AoEs. The thing is, it feels like J-Team are playing the game smartly enough. They're being a little bit skirmishy. They're coming in from different angles. Achi's been in and out. And honestly, looking the best he has, probably all tournament, sample size of three games, but this one looks <laughs> much better than the first two that he played so far. And yeah, has been, has been dynamic, has looked good. And I don't think you're gonna see those perfect ultimates. Speaking of, there's a stun, Edward's gone. Jay with his first kill. Almost too easy now. Edward is stepping forward alone in the lane. Was a Nautilus a bit behind him, but obviously not even close enough to really do anything. Edward goes down, had no flash, and kind of the classic thing as a support. You feel like you have to try and, and get some vision on the map, and you therefore have to overextend slightly to get that vision down. And then you just get picked off left and right, and it looks awful. But sometimes as a support, you have to try and gamble, to try and get down that ward. In this case, though, without flash, Probably not needed from Edward, and we see like on his TV, just sees him in the mid lane and just yeah. smacks him in the mid. Not quite respectful what Ash could do. It's a good pickup, 2-0-2, two, two. BB 100% kill participation, zero deaths. Great game so far, they probably should have never stepped him out, but it also means Immortals maybe should be a bit more afraid as JT looked to be cruising into the 2-0 in this one. The last spot in my finals will be grabbed after this series. Obviously, Lex trying to buff up his ulti here with his build, but his auto attacks still like absolutely no damage at the moment. Once again, actually, Sanguine Pools in time to not get kicked back by Lee Sin, but Edward once again caught in the wrong spot. 0 4. 80% of the team's deaths are on the support. I mean, everything is falling apart now. J Team is just in full control in this game, and it's all coming down to the pick and ban phase where you draft. The Syndra without a proper Ooh, counter pick. Let's see what happens in this fight. Going to Jay, there's the bullet time. Actually, comes across three and does some pretty good damage, but just is not enough. Fofo, the kill cutter with, I believe, an auto attack. And there's the kill on Alex. Nicely played by Achi, picking a QQ. Jay going to be next to a shot. Only going to hit BB, actually, and just not enough damage. Able to be dealt three for zero in that one if you don't count ever getting picked off before. And life is bad. Yeah, life sucks right now. Unless you're playing for J Team, then you're pretty happy. Or you're one That's of the Hex Drinker, baby! Hex Drinker is saving the BB's value. Life. The value is there. Trump would be proud. There's multiple Trumps out there. I'm speaking to the Hearthstone streamer. Value Town. <laughs> the mayor of Value Town, yeah, Trump SC. Hang on, yeah, did yeah, I we miss both something there? Like, there's, there's a new important Trump to the internet. That's I, I meant uh, Jeffrey Shit. I think that's how you pronounce his name. 
Either way, that man is great. And uh, the value was C, and Infinity Edge is now in for BB, and he's just very far ahead on this Ash. Yeah, much like the last game, we kind of hit a point where J Team are just so far ahead that it seems like almost impossible for them to lose the game. Full late game, stuff could go wrong. But this game should never go full late game here. They've been actually doing a great job snowballing. They even got the inhib turret 22 minutes into the game. So yeah. like, that that's a free inhib now, just waiting mm -hmm. to die. Any team fight means inhibitor. Any team fight. Heck, a team fight could even mean the game. It is difficult without super minions to actually win the game. Yeah, um, I think it's just an objective. There's one thing you can do though. Yes. You can actually try and stack minions on the inhib. So like you don't kill the enemy fast enough, all the minions meet there. You and kill you go for a double wave. Yeah, you kill the enemy minion, you get the second wave to arrive, and they're all hitting the the inhib, and then you kill the inhib, and they move in towards the nexus. But this early in the game doesn't happen. It only happens no. when uh, I see uh, some of the open mid games in EU, and uh, the teams have figured out how to m effectively how to win open mid games fast. How to effectively win the game that fast by stacking minions on the inhib, That's so you amazing. get like three waves. 20 minutes to actually close out the game. I actually hate open mid as a concept. I agree. Don't use that at home, guys. Just don't. <laughs> but I find it fascinating that actually, like, people have figured that little trick out. Strategized open mid. That's funny. Happens in Europe, man. Yeah, unlucky. I've, I've very rarely actually had those in NA. Mostly because someone says open because he's just tilted because he started 0 2 in lane. Everyone goes, no, we're going to play this game. And then, you know, we and move then on. And you from often there. end up winning. Yeah. It's always funny when that happens. So we get to see um, a good pick and ban phase. It's a great execution. Yeah. Makes me uh, very, very excited for the next game, honestly, if J-Team yep. can close this one out. Oh. That's an arrow in the face. That's going to be a lot of CC. Actually, yeah, there's the kick. Nicely done. Achi making it with style. Ward hops into the kick just to make sure it's all good. But that's the thing, you know, when you see this kind of pick and ban phase and execution, you, you know a team is, is honestly pretty good. Mm -hmm. Super easy game for them to play also, just with those two winning lanes of Bid and bot lane and, and the Lee Sin jungle instead of the Ivern. Big difference with the Syndra and, and that was the combo we talked about in the last game freak, like just how much more effective it is. Redemption coming down, Baron going down as well. Oh, oh Jay! Jay! Actually dies to Baron with some help! But still gonna be properly smited away by Achi with the 5v4 as it will when the Rexite comes back in. 4v4 I guess right now it is, but maybe they can get enough damage onto Morning. Does have Flash in the Maokai looking to get over towards the blue buff to get himself away. Nice bit of CC, he doesn't even have to flash to get out, just way too tanky on this champion. One kill, because of Baron actually killing Jay. In the end, Lex got the credit. Yep. And yeah, Lex doing Black Cleaver into Edge of Night as his build actually. I do appreciate Edge of Night of Misfortune. It makes sense, it's it's all the armor pen and damage you get from a Yomus, but also has an on-trigger Banshee's Veil. Exactly, you're like, you you activate that one or you start the channel time and then you, you have your ulti so it's harder to interrupt the ulti mm -hmm. as well with like a long range. You know, Zyrastan or something so yeah. like that. So it definitely makes sense. Problem is, just your unhit damage is so weak, honestly, right now. Yep. You need so much time to really do anything uh, other than like just your ulti, basically. Like he's building to just have that one great ulti yep. in a team fight. I mean, ultimately, this. That is technically also what MF as well. Yeah. Uh, obviously, yes. You wouldn't pick MF if you weren't going to go for that kind of play style. Right. You just pick a different champion if you're going to try to auto attack people down. But yeah. Vegas squad just sort of weren't able to get themselves the right kinds of team fights as it, as it was. So but they just fell so far behind yeah. in the early game by having these uh, losing lanes and, and then mm -hmm. uh, really couldn't do anything against it. Edward then got caught multiple times in the mid game, obviously, didn't make it easier. And now you still have that open inhib sitting there looking at us. BB has now spotted the inhib. The rest of the team is on the bottom lane, though. I think he's got like no threat on him. There's so few pick tools from Vega. It's pretty much just the Nautilus, and they can see him top lane. He's actually being held down by Morning's Maokai, so... He can play that aggressively, and it just doesn't even matter. Oh, be easy peasy. They're just basically trying to pull the enemy team around and say, like, okay, now we can find him the tower with our super minions. Or our buffed up minions, I should call them. Like the super minions. Baron up minions, the Baron minions. Three balls from Syndra, ready to be fired away as a potential stun into an ulti, and then you are dead. Santara, nope, he's actually pretty lucky he got denied there because he definitely didn't Probably want to go Probably could have died in. for it, yeah. Yeah, definitely did not want to go in there. 12,000 and a half is the gold lead here. J Team looking to walk this one in. Yeah, you got ranked to ulti now on MF. All you can technically right. do is just try and dive in with your Wombo combo. It has to be attack. now. CC Chain's going to go in, but they got away from the Zyra knockup. But now Lex going to look for it, but it's just not going to be enough. Oh, they nearly get down BB. One auto attack from death. They don't have the shot. Zanzara can't get in there in time. He even dodges the Bray Seeker. 
And there we go, the nice re-engage. Achi takes down Edward, gets right back out of the base. The one fight where MF pulled off a decent ulti here, just wasn't enough. Lex almost took down BB, sadly. No kills. And once again, we're sitting with that one death from Jay, and that's it. So an engage on two non holy Not the perfect target if you are the Jay team, but you have so much damage, you're so far ahead. And ulti into knock up. It's actually a great combo. BB stays alive, though. Yep. Even the double up in the end didn't even do anything. And you got to see what that fight could have looked like if the game were closer. Like that sure. fight was reasonably close with a 12,000 gold deficit. Now, right. Granted, J Team playing a little bit looser with their gold lead. They like, ah, oh, we can take anything and it's fine. And but then, of course, also like, if the game had been close now, J Team probably would have misplayed early on in the game, and that's why the game sure. would be closer. Sure, absolutely. You're and then, right about that. you know, in a way, then obviously now, then a fight. You have different teams that going away, and it's completely different teams, completely different game. It is J-Team though with double Mountain Drake and Infernal. I don't think you can ask for much more if you want to close out the game. Maybe the third Mountain instead of that one Infernal? Yeah, I think you'd probably be better at closing the game out if you had third Mountain, but... It's just, it's almost all spoken for at this point again. 99% chance that J-Team wins this game, makes it a 2-0. We'll see if they can make that one close out. It's really looking like a much faster game than the previous. Seems like they have just slightly better siege tools this time around. Lots of long range champions. Here comes the next attempt for the knockup for the hard engage. Do they have the damage though? Lex just never gets the ulti out, just never gets to press the button. Pretty sure the cooldown was available. Now back on into Fofo. Pretty good bullet time. It just does not really seem to matter. The health part big enough. Inhibitor goes down and the flashes as Vega has to escape from this one. Once again, Wombo combo coming in. MF gets off the ulti, but really nothing happens. Vladimir doesn't even get to enter the fight. Didn't have Ghost in the last one. And that's kind of the thing, like, it seemed in the Pick and Ban phase, they were saying, we want Nautilus, so we get that guaranteed knockup on one of the two carries in the backline, either Ash or Syndra. Yeah. And then the whole point is that MF ulties through it, and Vladimir pops Ghost and just kind of runs through the enemy team, ignores the Zyra with his own pool, and gets to the backline and takes down some of these carries. That's some of the ways the teams are trying to counter these tank shield comms, where it's like so hard with some of the defensive items in the game. Obviously, Zyra doesn't really have those defensive items, one sure. of the problems for her, but it could have been. Uh, but some more, more like the tank comms, it's like, how do we get past the tank? Instead of trying to just kill the tank every time, how do we just ignore him and get his carries down so he doesn't have any damage? That seemed to be the reason for, for last pick in Nautilus, but coordination hasn't been there, and obviously the team is so far behind that it's almost impossible to coordinate it correctly. Yeah, one and a half minutes left on Baron. We'll see if J Team wants number two or if they can close out the game in the next time frame, really. 11 to 1 in kills, still 14,000 gold up. And well, top lane, the only inhibitor left. And again, they've got that ticking time bomb of mid and bottom inhibitors being already dead. And as they flood from the base, it's going to distract Vega Squadron. We'll see. Morning leading the charge, intelligently so. Make sure your tank leads. Don't screw it up. I have definitely face checked a Lux one too many times in my day. Playing Vayne and just being too greedy with it. Might be a flank here. Now Vladimir might actually get to the back line. No, he got nice denied. Nice back. That is actually really crucial. Lex has to get the ulti across. He's waiting for Vlad to go in. And I think actually kind of waits too long. Just doesn't get the damage across they really need. And here comes the re-engage. One already dead. They're going to make that two pretty soon. There's actually a nice trade kill. No, just kidding. It's not any of that. It's three already picked up. Now on to Edward. Goodbye. He's gone as well. Redemption. Doesn't get much done either, and Lex, the last one standing, and not that anymore. Morning gets the kill, gets the shutdown, gets the ace. 16 to 1 and kills J Team 2 0, 31 minute victory. And now it's time for J Team to rematch Immortals for the second and final semi final slot out of Group A. And looking pretty good right now. Great, honestly, uh, second game from them. Strong start in the first game as well. Much more confidence, and definitely look much better with BB in the lineup. Not really surprising, obviously. He's one of the star players on the team.